Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. If we'll come to order, we will call to order the monthly meeting of the Anderson County Budget Committee for Thursday, October 6, 2022, 4 o'clock p.m. Randy Walters, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Commissioner Wandell. Commissioner Foster. Here. Commissioner Vandegrift. Present. Commissioner Val. Here. Commissioner White. Com Commissioner Denenberg. Here. Commissioner Bochamp. Here. And Commissioner Smallridge. Here. Let the record reflect, we do have a quorum. If you all would join me in prayer and then we'll ask Commissioner Foster if he would to lead us in the pledge. I stand for us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you honor and praise and thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, most of all, for saving us, for giving us counsel, Lord, for always being there for us. Please forgive us of our sins, Lord, times we know that we fail you. Strengthen us, God, to always do what you would have us to do every day. Lord, in the meetings, in the courthouse, out of the courthouse, in our everyday lives. Lord, as we begin this meeting, we pray that you be with each one. Give us your wisdom, your discernment to do what's best for your people. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, before we get started with the regular agenda, we need to make an addition. If there are no objections, we need to go ahead and elect uh, a chairman for the budget committee for this upcoming year. So if you will add that uh, to the agenda under 1A, and we will open the floor for nominations. I'll make a motion to nominate Shane Val to continue as chairman. Second. Good. <laughs> Any other nominations? Hearing none, if we could have a motion for nominations to cease and vow to be elected by commission. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Thank you all very much. We will continue to try to do a good job for you for another year. Moving on with the agenda, the cash and fund balance report. If you will notice, uh, Director Holbrook is absent today, but the very capable Randy Walters is here filling in for him. Randy, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay, in reviewing the uh, general fund, fund balances, restric restricted fund balance of 1 million, 126,534, committed funds of 1,685,984, assigned fund balance of 2,105,364, unassigned fund balance of 11,276,376, which gives us a total fund balance of $16,194,258. General fund cash is sitting at 11,577,571. Any questions on the cash and fund balance report? Hearing none, continue on, Randy. Next is the local option sales tax collections. Uh, for this tends to lag two months behind. So uh, for the month of August, uh, across the county as a whole, uh, we were up, I'm sorry, down 4%. But the county's portion of that tax for the month of August compared to last month, last year's month of August, was up $40,000 or 8.75%. Any question on the sales tax report? Hearing none. Moving on with the agenda, item number 1B, I'm sorry, item number 2 will be the consent agenda. Those are items 1 through 4. give us a little sure uh, we can take these individually or as a, a group um, whatever the committee's pleasure is how about we take them as a group 
Motion by Commissioner Smallridge to approve items one through four as a group. Second, Second by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. The next items are items five through eight uh, for the schools, fiscal services, and uh, Dr. Peart is here. I know you may want to speak to these, but uh, we can take these individually if that's the committee's pleasure or as a group. I'll make a motion to approve as a group. Commissioner Denenberg moves to approve items five through eight as a group. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Vandegrift. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. Item nine is an appropriation from the highway department. Highway Superintendent Gary Long. Uh, they're taking money from the restricted balance and moving it to the expenses for truck tires. $20,000. I'm sorry, what was that again? They're taking 20000 or the request is to take $20,000 from the restricted code okay. and move it into an expense line item for tires, purchase of tires. Mm -hmm. Kyle, Commissioner Denenberg moves to approve item number nine. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Chairman, I got a quick question back, sorry, on the previous, on the school system. Um, I'm guessing it's clerical error, but it said increase, increase on their uh, federal, the fiscal service federal re revenue. Do we need to make any kind of motion to fix that or there, we're increasing two codes? Yeah, but that, that's a Is revenue that right? code. So okay, that, both that, those. that's, sorry, it would work like a grant. So that, okay, just making sure. Yeah, Thanks. that's it. That is correct. I know. I was just asking. That's a good question. I'll remove it too quick. It's a good question. Let the record reflect Commissioner Juan Dale is present. That brings us up to seven. Uh, item number 10. Uh, did we get a vote on nine? I'm sorry. I, yeah, I thought it passed. Yeah. Did it? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Rookie mistake. All right. Item 10 is uh, for Jeff Cole, the county clerk. Uh, Jeff cannot be here with us today, but what he is doing here is increasing his revenue code about $2,500 for business tax process fee uh, to re and moving it into an expense code so that he can replace two decal printers that are not working. Commissioner Denenberg moves to approve item number 10. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Foster. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, item 11. Is from the Ag Agricultural Extension Office, Laura Clark, and the nurse of Laura's here for us today. Um, this, as the explanation shows there, the county gave um, the county employees a 5% raise this past year. And so uh, there's an, we believe there's an agreement with the Ag Extension Office that portion of the salaries that the county funds, which is 45% for them, is also subject to that 5%. I know Laura has been looking for that agreement. We don't seem to have a copy of it, and I have not talked to you lately, so you may have it. I put a, um, the copy of the Tennessee Code with our Ag Committee um, and the Tennessee Agriculture Extension Act, so I can pass those out to you. So historically, since 1955, we've been included in that, um, and including in 2001, when commission passed $1,000 increase for all county employees. So this was the first year that our budget was not 
increased for that. Were they given their increases? No, we did not get them this year. And I think it was just an oversight. I'm not sure what happened. But so I wrote the, what I passed out is the breakdown. So UT pays 55% of our salaries and Anderson County pays 45. So the 5% only impacts the 45% that Anderson County pays. Mm -hmm. I'll move for approval. Commissioner Smallridge moves to approve item number 11, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Commissioner Wanda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How many employees are Seven. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, Ma'am, you said that uh, the last time that you all were included in the raise where we did this was how long ago? 2021. So the last raise that oh, okay. commission passed. Okay. So up until this year, we've always been included. Okay. So I think it was just an oversight. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. <clears throat> Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Item 12 is from John Vickery, Director of Fleet Services. Uh, this is to replace some equipment, tools, and so forth that were damaged during the recent flood. This is uh, money that was recovered through insurance settlement, and we have received the 63,101.06. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Wandale moves to approve item number 12, seconded by Commissioner Foster. Any discussion? Yeah. It's Good afternoon. Yes. Do you anticipate any other costs being incurred due to the floods that we had? Are nothing other than what's went through insurance so far. There shouldn't be nothing else. So this should do it. No, there's more insurance money coming in, but okay. yeah, everything we know of has been claimed on insurance so far. Yeah, just a general question. Um, fleet services covers all the vehicles for the county, does it? Um, if I'm making, I guess. All but highway department. All but the highway. Yeah, they do their own, and we do the majority of the rest of the county stuff. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. Item 13 is request to transfer funds from restricted code for tourism into uh, two expense lines, one for operating lease payments and one for contracted services. I know Stephanie is here. Maybe speak for that. Move, move for approval. Commissioner Smallridge moves to approve item number 13. Second. Got a second by Commissioner White. Any discussion? Yes. Commissioner Wanda. Thank you. Um, 20000 for operating lease payments. What's that? That would be if um, when we auction the building, that will be covering expenses for a temporary home. Um, we Our board meets every quarter. So we just had our meeting um, Tuesday and they won't meet again until January. So if we do have to pay for a temporary location, this will give us the funds to do that. My plan is not to have to pay for a temporary location. We are looking um, in the county in other locations where we could be maybe housed for free for about a year. But if we do have to pay, that will cover our moving expenses and then any lease payments that we would have to pay for. Well, it will return to the tourism fund balance, yes. It won't be spent. Okay. Correct. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carried. Okay. Item 14 is an office criminal justice program grant for the detention facility. Uh, this is something that uh, they 
the sheriff's department was recently notified of. Motion to approve. Well, one moment though. There is a <laughs> <laughs> one second. There is a typographical error on this one that we need to correct, and, and we will make sure it's corrected for the county commission copy. But if you would change two hundred and fifty-three thousand to two hundred and thirty-five thousand. Oh, good. That's a good move. <laughs> So the grants for 235. 235, and it operates as a reimbursement grant. It's my understanding. Your motion still stand, Commissioner White. Yes, sir. Second. Commissioner White moves to approve item number 14, seconded by Commissioner Foster. Any discussion? Commissioner Wandell. Is it possible, Randy? Do you have a copy of the grant? I do not. Uh, in fact, the the total the grant application and the grant contract have not been fully executed at this point. So that, that's in process currently. Commissioner Wandell, if in, you would like, sir, we have Lieutenant Zach Allen, uh, one of our commanding officers at the jail uh, that was instrumental in working on that grant. If there's any questions you think he may be able to answer, uh, more than happy to try to do that. <clears throat> yeah, he can yeah, definitely get I was just answer. wanting a copy of the grant yeah. to have for my own eyes at some point. Right. Don't have to have it right this second, right. but I want to see it. And then I guess Officer Allen can answer the questions about my next question is who will send the invoices back to the state? Is that the process? So we get these funds in, then you send invoices, bills to the state. How's that work? So as far as that part goes, uh, it goes through me at the sheriff's office. Once we purchase whatever the item is, we send the receipt to them and they refund the full balance as far as I know. Now I'm not real familiar with how all that works. But that's how it's worked in the past. And so, Randy, how do you work with the sheriff's office in so that process? Typically, the sheriff's office processes their own grants and submits their own reimbursements. But the process he described is correct. When, when we've got a, a bill that we paid that is subject to that grant, that gets submitted on a specific form to the Office of Criminal Justice Programs, and then the money will show up two to three weeks later. So, how much the, later? Uh, you know, it really depends. Office of Criminal Justice Programs. The ones that I'm dealing with go very quickly. So usually within three weeks, okay. two to three weeks, sometimes a month at the outside. Thank you. So have we received the funds yet? No, sir. This one's a reimbursement grant. So we would have to spend the money. Then we would send evidence that that has been spent to them and they will reimburse us for that. So when the sheriff's office does that, how are you notified when that's done? Well, we are. So when the sheriff's office does it, we're working on the process really around grants because we need to take a look at trying to do more centralized processing of that. So I have to stay in touch with them really to you know, find out what grants they have in, in place at, at any given point in time. I'm certainly going to support this. I just yeah. was kind of trying to learn the, the process because the there's right. 235000 the sheriff's office can spend to do all these good things inside the jail, but then you've got to send those invoices to the state, and I want to make sure that our uh, budget or finance right. is able to capture. Well, so what they did in the case of this one, so they notified us that this was happening and that was the genesis of the preparation of this budget amendment request. Okay, thank so, you. I appreciate that. And, then, and then what we do is we give them the appropriate accounting codes for that. So they can't really move beyond uh, spending I, until it happens. I called the state today and uh, they said they approved on September 13th. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if we get, so they can start immediately. Well, the paperwork lagged, and so my, my Tyler and I exchanged emails on this today. They really should not spend anything until we get a contract because there could be a performance date in there that I'm not aware of that may say, you know, this is for expenses incurred after X period of time. It's great. Thank you. Any further Chairman? discussion? Commissioner? Uh, I was just wondering what, was there certain things would they applied for in the grant? Or I know there's restrictions on grants usually, but do you know what y'all applied for? Yes, sir. We applied for a key card system, a lot like they use up here, you see on the outside of the door, to help protect some things that we have as far as IT equipment and also our uniform, trying to make that more centralized so we can make sure that we're recouping our uniforms and things when people leave and we have a better count of all of that stuff. Also, uh, 20 tablets for our officers to use inside the jail. Also, 10 desktops and monitors that go along with that was a big part of this one. And my understanding is that you supplied them with the application, a list of the equipment. That yeah, it's so all so they, they know what it is. Specific we're things that we can buy and can't buy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Commissioner Smiley. That was my question, what type of equipment we were talking about. Thank One thing you. we learned during the COVID crisis was we had to get very good with logistics and moving stuff from one room to another because we had to have a new purpose for the room that we once had so once we started consolidating rooms and trying to, to, to move stuff around we we found out that there were actually grants out there that would help us kind of prepare for something like that in the future so it was a uh, it was a learning experience as well commissioner white thank you randy i guess this 235,000. where is it right now that they're going to spend yeah so we'll have to front that money basically that comes out of the general fund yeah okay yeah. Uh, then uh, another question these uniforms that you're talking about sometimes you don't recoup it, uh, when, a, when you hire a, a new personnel is those uniforms given to him or her or are they sold to that person do that no, those are they're supplied by the sheriff's department okay so sometimes you do lose them uh, through wear and tear and then it's just right now they're kind of not a real great system to keep up with we have 2x 3x it's more of a time management thing than it is an equipment thing okay so like right now we're going through having to hand dig through shirts pants those things finding the right and correct size when we have a new room like this and with the computer system that is we're going to get with it it'll all be in a computer so we can click a couple buttons and see if we have a 2x shirt or a 34 pants or whatever that may be thank you thank you mr chairman You'd be amazed how quickly shirts and pants tear up. And hey, I crawl under floors every yeah, day. Exactly. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and used to back in the day, we would wash them if they got anything on them. And nowadays, it's not very. It's not a good idea and sometimes that's it. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Well, what happens? We have to incinerate. Them. If we don't have them in the storage room, but hopefully we're going to be able to have better organized with this. Yeah, absolutely. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, item 15 is from Finance Director Robbie Holbrook. And what he is doing here is he is moving money from a restricted code. Uh, this is the contributions to the commissioners for the landfill operation. So this is putting it in the code so that it can be spent. <clears throat> Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Wondell to approve <coughs> item number 15, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, so Randy, this is 22,000 new dollars that have never been spent. Yeah, it's not new. So the, the note that I've got here on that is that it's $22,000 available from past years that is unspent. So it's not new money. He's just putting it in the, taking it from the restricted code where it's been sitting and putting, placing it in the expense code. So I guess what I want to try to understand is we get so much every year allotted for the commissioners. This is the way that connection that that funds correct. to, yes. to spend. We all get what is it 2500 or something i can't remember. i think it's 2500 so what we're saying is we still have that fund but this is from all the years that may have not been spent yes yeah, some years and i don't know a lot about that program right. but apparently from some years it does not all get spent and as it accumulates in the if it doesn't get spent and it's been placed in the expense code it rolls back into restricted so so this is the accumulation over some period of time of those dollars so those funds are now going to be placed into this landfill operations and maintenance code is that the way i'm reading that's it? my yes that is correct based on this okay so i guess i want to make sure we're not losing the ability as commissioners to expend it the way we were given all along if it's going in a code and we're going to lose that uh, just because the commissioner prior didn't spend it i don't feel like the commissioner serving in that capacity now should lose that yeah. i, I you, you follow me, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I, so I, I don't, I made the motion to support this with the understanding I thought it was going to go back into our funds so we can spend it as we see fit for education like it was supposed to be. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's what I, unfortunately, I don't know what the details of that program are. Uh, so I. Who would know?
Or we can get it resolved and bring it to commission if that would be. I, d I just don't know enough about the no, background and how that money's flowed in the past. I, okay. I don't think it was an arbitrary decision that put it there, but I don't know what factors went into that decision. The mayor made So Randy just doesn't know about the history of no. this program, but the the um, expenditure code that Robbie is putting this in is a contribution code. So it'll be strictly for your all's contribution. And it'll be ready instead of having to pull it out of that restricted code. But on this type of expenditure, what he will do is once we get to June 30th of 2023, he would put it back into a restricted code if it's unspent because it's dedicated for those waste management contributions. So you feel like mayor, and I don't mean to cut anybody off, you know, you know, so you feel like we're going to be able to have the ability if we as commission decide we'd like to take those funds and increase our amounts for this year to give out. Could we, could we consider that or even take that 22,000 here and, you know, spread it over the next two or three years. Yes. What he's doing, he's teeing this up. So it's ready for you all to spend. He's right. basically putting you on notice. You've got $22,000 extra in unspent that's built up. So yes, Excellent. but um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, he can confirm that for you as well at the full commission. Appreciate it. Yep. So it's more like housekeeping budgetary. Yes. Thing. Any further discussion? Commissioner I, Just Commissioner, I were, uh, Chairman, I would be interested to know more about the program herself as a new commissioner, what we can use this money for, um, so I see where they're putting a contribution where we can actually expend it on the expenditures, but I just don't know much about the program, what we can use it for, who we can, or how we get some more information on that. So I would be interested in learning more about that. I think the law director usually sends that out once a year, maybe every other year, reminding everyone what, what it can be spent for, but right. we'll certainly get that. Thanks. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, item 16 is from the drug court, Judge Spitzer and Winnie Gadd. Uh, this is the drug court grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. We've been getting, it's, we get it, have been getting it for a long time, and it's on a one-year contract. This is the first time in many years uh, they have placed funds in there for an increase for that director. So that's what this represents. So instead of that total grant, now total 77,000 as opposed to 70,000. Motion to approve. Commissioner Foster moves to approve item number 16. 7,700. Do we have a second? Yes, sir. Second by Commissioner Wandell. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Just a, a quick comment. Uh, the $732 is coming from a, an existing expense code that's already budgeted. So the new money is 7000 Thank you. Okay, item 17 is from EMS Director Nathan Sweet uh, for data processing equipment to replace uh, computers and uh, software that is aged out. He's taking that from his fund balance 118. Motion to approve. Commissioner White moves to approve item number 17, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Yes. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Do we reclaim anything off these uh, old, re old computers? Or are they plan. beneficial to anyone? I know that on the computers, we destroy and certify that we've destroyed the hard drives. Okay. And then typically what we'll do is we will sell the anything of value that's left as a surplus. But okay. Brian may have more details on Very that. true what Randy's saying. We'll, uh, I've got the mentality and mindset, and so does my staff and crew, that we'll use the components after we get the these computers turned in, for instance. We'll pick them apart, find the good components that are worth still using. and. Uh, we, we call it a bucket of parts at that point, but we'll build another PC out of it and use it for some other less tedious purpose, but it can still go on and be used in the environment in our, in our government. But uh, not always is that the case, but often it is. I can't always guarantee that to be the case, but usually we try to use it as far as it could go. Uh, a lot of I the bet you do. We do. We, we, hey, I'll, I'll run it as long as it'll 
not blow smoke out the back of it. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Okay. Item 18 is for Mark Stevens, elections in the election commission. Uh, he is moving money from his rental code, postal charges, and deputy registrars, which is a payroll code, into legal notices, printing, and part-time help. And the explanation is to uh, transfers to cover additional expenses from the August election and due to a vacancy in the office since July of one full-time employee, which is necessitating a greater demand for part-time help. Commissioner approved. Commissioner Foster moves to approve item number 18. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? That's cool. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay, item 19 is from the mayor and Jeff Kabalka for solid waste. Uh, they are uh, removing money from the restricted code and moving it into crushed stone and other construction. Uh, and this is to for construction materials of pad and shed at the recycling center, in addition to materials needed to improve separation of temporary storage and recycling material of recycling materials. Move for approval. Commissioner Smallridge moves to approve item number 19. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, items 20, or let's say item 20 is from the mayor, and that is for uh, creating a full time position of an assistant emergency management agency director. And I know the mayor's here if there are any questions on that. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion to approve item number 20 by Commissioner Denenberg. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Commissioner Smallridge. I was just wondering, uh, what is the staff of this department right now, the total staff? And so uh, currently Steve Payne is the director and uh, Karen, who is here tonight, is um, his right arm. And um, we have a part-time position that we're wanting to make full-time into this assistant. And um, Steve, so if you'll look at your budget amendment, um, he is actually paid out of a part-time code. He is part-time. And so he is going to slowly wind down um, his time with EMA, but we would like to transition where he's still there for a very small amount, you know, as you can see, um, that budget that he's paid out of is being used to fund this full-time position. So his hours will become more limited, but he will still stay in that capacity for training purposes and to make sure um, that, um, you know, the, the assistant director who would come up to eventually be the full-time director is fully equipped and knowledgeable and fully understands all that is required of that position. Thank you. Commissioner Foster. Uh, so the 30,000, is that added to a code? Like that's not what we're, the salary alone, right? Um, no, no, it's not, okay. um, but it's not a whole lot more than that. So um, that, particular individuals already being paid on a part-time basis. Okay. So that is what would be needed to make that person full-time and then also carry it to the end of the year. So again, again you will not have the part-time position. Anymore. Correct, I'm taking that part-time. So he, he's giving up those part-time wages to move into his full-time salary code. Both of those individuals are. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. 
Item 21 is a request from the mayor as well uh, for her office, and it is a request for moving money from part-time to a full-time salary code. And the explanation is with an overwhelming amount of work projects requirements of the mayor's office i would like to transfer part-time funds into a full-time code in order to increase the amount of assistance the position is an operations and project coordinator and is assisting in project management coordinating all aspects as it relates to scope schedule resources is writing policies procedures reports and more this position will interact frequ frequently with the new grants coordinator on project grant compliance Commissioner Dennenberg moves to approve item number 21. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Vandegrift. Any discussion? Mayor? Is this in coordination with the one you just gave? Um, in any way? No, it is not. Okay. So this one is basically, there are just so many projects. So for um, when I got this individual started, for example, the very first thing um, I've put him on is the animal shelter. So the shelter and then policies and procedures, um, creating a manual, getting um, all of those uh, standard operating procedures for out in the field in order. So that's the kind of thing um, he's working on. And he's working out of the finance office, so he's going to be right there uh, with the grant folks as well. So, for instance, TDOT, we've got a sidewalk project. Um, Leanne and I simply, uh, we were awarded that back uh, in the winter. Um, Leanne's done all the certifications, but, I mean, there's just not enough time to get all this done, so he's going to be doing things like that. Mr. Uh, my question is: Is the, is the thirty-two thousand additional to like make it a full time, or is that the full time amount? Is thirty-two thousand? Um, that that is the full time for me, and then I'm going to be filling in with a little bit more um, from another okay. department that'll also he'll also be assisting. Okay. So just thirty-two thousand dollars is not a lot for yeah. any kind of project management. Thanks. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Okay. And the last appropriation request is on the behalf of Animal Care and Control, Mayor Frank and Damon, Damon McKenna. Uh, this is a situation where they are recommend, per recommendations of HR as part of Animal Shelter Investigation and Review. One recommendation was that more staff was needed at the shelter so that two individuals are always working there for safety, for compliance, et cetera. This request converts an existing part-time position to full-time employment to ensure coverage at the shelter and also to ensure coverage for case complaint calls. Um, <clears throat> move for approval. <clears throat> Second. Commissioner Smallridge moves to approve item number 22, seconded by Commissioner Wandale. Any discussion? Yes. Commissioner Wanda. Um, Mayor, <clears throat> so this will, we had several positions, I believe, that weren't filled, correct? In that yeah, there, and there was one, I recall, one you um, read that we don't, we didn't have, and it's not even a vacant position. It was just one that was morphed into a new position. Okay. So this would make, this would take, um, we have an existing part-time um, uh, shelter tech plus part-time ACO, I mean, they're able to respond to calls. He would have to go through the training in February um, with Lieutenant Owens in the Sheriff's Department, but he would now become full-time. And so that would allow someone to be full-time, two people full-time at the shelter. Um, and that's what Kim had recommended. We needed that there for safety from even just basic safety, if there's an incident, to also if, if um, you know, there's a medical incident or if there is an altercation, you have a second set of eyes there, you always have a second person there as well. Um, but it also, if someone calls in sick, for instance, you do have that capability for him to get out into the field. Mr. Chairman, this is something we talked about in the Animal Shelter Advisory Committee Tuesday. 
and the concern was to get another employee so we appreciate it mayor and this falls right into one of our motions so uh, good good news thank you mayor thank you any further discussion here Commissioner Paul. Uh, and you said this person is currently part-time but they're going full-time did I understand that right mayor Yes, they're at uh, 29 and a half hours, so this would take them to 40 hours. And will that eliminate the part-time position or will we be filling the part-time position? Um, you know, I don't know if that leaves any part-time money. I had Robbie do the figuring on this That's one. I, I can confirm for you on Monday. I, I assumed what he put together was um, um, just doing what we did on the other ones, but I'll confirm that. Thanks. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. Okay. Section A is uh, also the mayor, and the topic is equipment testing for the volunteer fire departments. Okay, this is uh, coming from Anderson County Fire Commission. Um, uh, as you know, you as the Board of Commissioners fund an annual donation for the volunteer fire departments of 27500 for each of those agencies. And then also included in the budget is uh, funding for testing of equipment, ladder testing, um, NFPA inspections, pump testing, and SCBA testing. And um, that amount this year came up a little short. And so what the fire commission is asking for is additional funding to fully fund that. And then we can also put together uh, a system. I think what happened this year's, we might have, um, you know, everything wasn't done at the same time. And so that's how they ended up coming up a little bit short we'll put together a system that makes sure everybody gets their equipment tested. Um, but what they're asking for is an additional $10,800. In speaking with Director Holbrook, uh, if you'll recall, Bryceville Volunteer Fire Department agreed to reduce their allocation by $5,000 a year um, to pay down the overage that you all contributed to help them complete the construction of the volunteer fire department there in Bryceville. So that $5,000 is still sitting there. Robbie did not reduce that in the fund this year. They did not receive it. So really all we would need for this year would be $6,800 if you're interested in funding that for the volunteer fire department so that we could complete all the testing. And then next year that would be um, a budget request in the annual budget process. So for today, the request is uh, $6,800 if you're so willing. <clears throat> Out of the undesignated fund balance, I guess? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll make that motion. Commissioner Wandell, oh, motions to approve. We're listening to Section A, Randy. Pardon me? That no, we're identifying it as Section A. A, yes. A? Yes. Seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Thank you all. Okay, item B is EMS replacement equipment. EMS Director Nathan Sweet. I believe there's information that was included in the packet. Uh, so we're just asking for consideration and looking at the ARP funds, we have some equipment that's going to be coming up, or some of that's already in need of replacement, but some that's going to be coming up. Um, as you may recall, uh, for, for some of you, back in 2016, we replaced the cardiac monitors uh, for our service. They have a life expectancy of seven years, which is next year. Uh, currently, it's a 40-week lead time uh, for purchase to get the new monitors, so it's kind of why I'm coming now, as opposed to the summer of 2023 because that puts us on the right time. Um, so that would uh, get us to the point where we're replacing those cardiac monitors. Uh, so that is part of the request. The other is for the stretchers that are used on the ambulances. Um, we currently do not have enough for every ambulance, although some of those ambulances are backup. So when they switch into a backup truck, they currently take their current stretcher with them. But if there was a need that we needed to staff a backup truck, 
uh, it doesn't currently, some of them don't currently have a stretcher. Uh, that being said also, they also have a life expectancy of seven years. Six of them are 2008 models and one of them is a 2013. Uh, those seven are currently out of service. Uh, there is a possibility for us to look at repairing them, uh, but you're repairing something that is going to break down sooner than later again. Uh, so the request for consideration is to take a look at uh, replacing stretchers, replacing cardiac monitors. Uh, in the information received or uh, submitted, it does include returning to them our old ones that gets us a discount. So that is already factored into the price. Uh, cardiac monitors, 14 cardiac monitors is, is about 610,000. And then 12 stretchers is about 395,000. Ultimately, these are capital outlay purchases. Um, they happen roughly about every seven years or so. Uh, so they usually, because we're buying so many, that's why you're seeing such a big price. That's why I've decided to, to bring it to you all now in consideration of ARP funds for that. We have a motion or any questions or comments? I'll make Commission Denenberg moves to approve all the expenditures out of Section B out of the ARP funds? Yes, sir. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'd like to digest this for a moment. That's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Motion dies for lack of a second. Sure. Any further questions, though, on it or anything? Yeah. Commissioner Wanda. <laughs> So, Nathan, what you're saying is for the million dollar request here, none of it is covered under the budget that you just was allotted. No, sir. Uh, in capital outlay, we don't factor that into recurring budget expenses. Okay. And then it says here the expiration of this quote is 930. Uh, that is correct, uh, but it's not going to expire. Uh, we've already talked with the vendor about that. Um, so they're going to honor that, that price. And they understand that it may take time to, to have discussion, so um, they allowed me to have time for that as well. Yeah, I, I'll look it over a little more too. Thank you. Commissioner Bochamp. I have a question for you, Nathan. Yes, ma'am. Um, on all this stuff that you got listed here, um, can I get expiration dates on this stuff? Like how long have you had it? Have you had this stuff for 20 years? five years, two years. I'd like to know, um, you know, how long your equipment, how long you've had it, because um, this is a lot of money. And I'd like yes, to know if you have new stuff or you have stuff that's outdated by 15 years. Yeah, so uh, a quick answer, and I'll be more than happy to submit that as well. Thank uh, you. 13 cardiac monitors we bought in 2016. Okay. Uh, one cardiac monitor, um, we've had it since, I think, around 2008. 2007, I'll get a date on that. Um, the stretchers, uh, six of them were from 2008, uh, one of them's from 2013, and we did buy some other demo units. So I'll get a breakdown on the stretchers. I didn't have that one in front of me. The cardiac monitors I knew was easy because we bought almost all of them at once uh, just about seven years ago. But I'll, I'll put that and get that information to you, have it in writing so you can have that for looking over it. Yes, sir. Chairman. Commissioner Foster. So I know you said seven years you've had the monitors. So one, is this need to go to bid or is this off a contract we're buying? And then have we looked at trying to space those out because in seven years we're not going to have the ARPA funds, which obviously, you know, seven years from now long, it's going to be a long time, but that can come up if it's a million dollars every seven years that we're looking to spend. And by that point, it's going to be even more. Have we looked at trying to buy some ever, you know, right. five this year, five next year, which I know with our funds we've got money out there to do, but sure. I'm thinking about the future too. How do we get these on that schedule? No, and that's a great question. We've actually had discussions multiple times, me and the finance department, actually me and Randy in specific, over the years of looking at what's the best way to, to do this, to acquire this. 
Ultimately, when you look at bulk buying, you typically get the best deal per unit because you're buying multiple. Um, ideally for me, it would be great if every time we bought a new ambulance, it came with a new stretcher and a new cardiac monitor. Then you're on a cycle and you're replacing those as they go. Uh, there's a couple issues with that. Um, one, you're eventually going to have different models. So you may have a cardiac monitor that's six years old and you're buying a new cardiac monitor that's a different model, so it may have a couple different features. So if you're a paramedic and you're using both cardiac monitors, you kind of have to adjust to both. Um, that's a potential problem with cardiac monitors. And in that being said, you're not getting the bulk price. So you ultimately, over the expanse of years, you're going to spend more. Um, I know Randy and I have talked about this, and I like the idea of, hey, every time new ambulance, new stretcher, new cardiac monitor, they're on a, they're on a cycle. They get phased out, and you're not having to worry about those bulk buys, but it is a cost savings when you bulk buy. And was this on a contract? Uh, there's, so there's a SAVIC co-op that we're a part of. Uh, so the stretchers, uh, really, there are other monitors or other stretchers out there. Um, these all integrate together. Uh, so they, we already have systems in place, and I know especially for our stretchers, we have to buy the specific ones to fit in the speci uh, specific stretcher loading systems that we have, but we do have a SAVIC co-op, which we've purchased off of. It is a bid process, and we've purchased off before. All right, thanks. Any further discussion? Thank you, Director. Yes, sir, thank you. New business. Okay, uh, the first item of new business is from the detention facility in the Sheriff's Office, and a discussion, I believe, yeah. On washers and dryers in the detention facility. What was that last part? I'm sorry. The washers and dryers in the detention facility. Yes. This is the information that I have. Uh, Sheriff Barker, you have the floor, sir. Okay, yeah. Um, so I have with me Lieutenant Allen and our Director of Maintenance, Stephen Reback. Um, our washers and dryers have been an issue for us. We've been repairing them. Um, last count I had, which I can't say this is 100% certain. But we had uh, two, two, drivers. two drivers that are operational out of, out of six. And how many washers? One washer out of five. One washer out of five. Now, we've repaired these things multiple times, um, and they keep going down. And, and we have a, a bid here, or not, excuse me, not a bid. We had an estimate um, to replace all of them. Uh, that is, I, I'm assuming it was in the packet, 143, 138. And what we're asking tonight is for consideration to let us bid this out. That's all you're asking for, is just to bid it out? Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's because we we need to be <laughs> we need to be looking to buy. Our Maytag repair man is really busy. <laughs> Make a motion to approve this. I second it. Commissioner White moves to approve, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Any discussion? So is the motion to to bid it out, or is the motion to fund it? <coughs> yeah, we if we think I think that this is worst case scenario. We think we're going to come in under that. Oh, that's fine. I just didn't know if the motion was to fund this or to do a bid. To bid it out. Okay, thank you. That's why he asked. Yes, sir. That's right. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Smaller. Got it. Uh, Sheriff, where would the funds for the, if if we eventually bid and accept it? Where would the funds yeah. come? From? Uh, that would be for county commission to make a decision okay. on. Um, we have, we, we did not, this would be, um, this is not a recurring expense as was discussed earlier. So this would be something we would, uh, the county commission would decide how we would do or how it would be paid for. Commissioner Foster. How old are your current ones? I know you said they're 14. Okay. And what's the life cycle of washer and dryers and <laughs> come on up. Um, the rep that came out from uh, Unimac said about seven years on them, but that's a uh, ours run 24 seven. Right. They run day and night. So he said it could be less than that. And it has been. <laughs> Average 350 inmates <laughs> laundry each week. For Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Sure. Uh, if you bid this out, how long will the bid take? 
And if you, if you decide on the bid, how long would it take then to get these machines on site? Um, he said 12 to 16 months. Yeah. Once the bid has been approved from this company, they're saying 12 to 16, uh, 12 to 16 weeks from delivery date. To and you can summer. wait that long? Well, yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. We, we want to go through the proper channels and the proper process. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, duct tape, love, and hope is, uh, is always on our side. So, um, we, we, uh, we believe we can. And Commissioner White, to answer your first question, the bid would have to be out for 10 days. 10 days. Yes, sir. How soon can we get the bid out? Uh, we could get the bid out, I think, from Friday or Monday. <coughs> Tomorrow or Monday. I'd like to see it go out to Commissioner White's point, of course, sure, as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah we'd appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. And then we'll leave it up to Shane to find the money. <laughs> I got a shovel somewhere. Yeah, you know, I'm guessing bulk pricing when we go out to bid, because I kind of think that not that this is a million dollars, but still 143,000. We go, you know, that we got to do every seven years. Is there, which, you know, washers don't last, you know, two years, but I guess one goes down, we're going to go out and replace it. Um, yeah, honestly, honestly, we should, but now, to, to, to be frank with you about that, we have done our absolute best to, to keep them going. Uh, it's just that it, they're, they're, they're really, they're beyond being the life. We've got our money's worth out of these. I guess it's just hard to get these on a schedule compared, you know, something. Yeah, I mean, outside of the warranty, you just don't know. And it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, I just replaced a central heat and air unit at my house. Yeah, you never know where they're gonna go. And that thing was a nightmare. And to the sheriff's point, we, we took parts from the washer and dryer over in unit one a while back just so we could use it on the washers and dryers in our main building we've literally done all we can do to keep these things going if it was a horse we'd have done had to shoot it <laughs> yes ma'am It's not idea, by no means. Um, but I mean, you know, this is the process we have, and and this is what you know what we want to do. It, now, if you, you guys would like to, somebody like to make a second motion and just say, yeah, we'll go ahead and start, you know, get it in front of commission to, to for full approval, so that we can go ahead and try to make the purchase. But either way, it still has to go out to be it. I don't Randy, know. Do you know the criteria for emergency purchases like that? Yeah, and just. I mean, Wouldn't qualify. Robbie and I and uh, deputy purchasing agent Catherine Ash Mary have discussed it. Okay. Say that again, Randy. Robbie and Catherine and I have discussed it, and, and it does not appear to fit the criteria for emergency mm -hmm. purchase. Okay. Well, I think it should. Well, the the counter <laughs> argument would be with respect to maintenance and planned obsolescence and all of that. So, I mean, you know, that's. That's the finance director's call, 100% on that. We have the clinch and some really nice river rock yeah. out there. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Find some scrub boards. And they, they are currently working. Yes. One. 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 One washing machine and two dryers. One washing machine and two dryers. Yeah. For how many people? On average, 350. 350 average. Yeah, we've had to change our uniforms and the process of handing out clothing and stuff, so just to give us more time to do it. I'm sorry. And there's not a contract about all those, right? That's been bid out already or what what can be done to expedite? Well put it out to be in tomorrow. Correct, man? Yes. But it has to be in 10 days, and then it's bound. We may, we may get better delivery from another vendor by That's putting it out to bid. I mean, there, and certainly we could get better or different pricing, so. Yeah. 
Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I, I just would like to have that in the bid. I'm sure you do, but I, you know, who can, how fast is equipment oh, on hand and how fast can it be done? Right. <coughs> The responses to the bid, mm -hmm. yeah. There's, a, I mean, they they've got to respond within that ten days. So yeah, we we'll we'll know quickly. We that. Yeah, weekends count. A ten business days. So, so it won't be back. Oh, wait a minute. No. Hang on. I may have misspoke. Mm -hmm. if, if it's not counting, I think it's calendar days. I'll have to confirm. Okay. That's Catherine's Look, expertise. Yeah, it won't be back. It won't. It won't. It'd be the 21st. Yep. <laughs> be more than happy to. Yeah, it has to go before me. Is this, let me ask if I, if I'm sorry. Hmm? Is, is the equipment on, you said 12 weeks for this stuff here? Yeah, on the quote, they said 12 to 16 week delivery date. So it wouldn't even help if we prove this, really. Yeah. Mayor Frank. Since that is the high water mark, you could go ahead and authorize up to, and then that way that would authorize the purchasing department to be able to award the bid. Uh, and then if it comes in over that, then it could come back to you all and you could make a decision on what to do next or maybe just order four or three or something like that. Thank you very much. Yeah, Absolutely. Frank. Good solution. Have we already voted on a motion? We, moted, we voted on bidding and out, but I think it would be appropriate to, to have another, another motion, motion to do what the mayor suggested. And I'm going to make that motion. Motion made by Commissioner Denenberg to go ahead and vote to set the, I want to make sure I'm using the correct verbiage. The purchase. The, the top amount, 143, 138. Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Vandegrift. Any further discussion? <laughs> Yeah, I think we have to. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That motion still that stands. That already before this motion. We that voted. Yeah. We yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That already passed. We voted on it. Yeah. This is just this is just setting the funds aside. Right. Right. So it'll we'll speed right. up the process. Commissioner Smarge. Is this the only vendor we're going to be sending bids out? No. It should be more. Yeah. What the mayor was saying, hopefully, some of them make them in a little cheaper and get yeah, to us a little quicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're just the Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'll just add I, I, when I had the opportunity to go through the jail with the sheriff a few weeks ago, uh, oh, it might have been a month ago, I don't remember, but uh, there's definite need for washer and dryers, absolutely. It's, uh, I don't know how they do what they do with what they have. Why are you all waiting so long? That's, we've been trying to. Be that's as cost effective and that's why it's not an emergency. As long as we can. That's why it's not an emergency to answer your question. Normally, I would have got one of these in, thrown at us, set at the table, and I said, no, this didn't meet the deadline, but this is a need. There's no question. One other question I got for you, Sheriff. Five to six, there, is there a difference where you have one more dryers and washers, about the same amount price because the washers cost more? Is that? No, that's all we have. The washers can. The weight and load that they wash, uh, the, the six dryer, once you dispense it out, it, okay. it meets their requirements. Okay, that's why I was going to add to all that. There was two different numbers there. Any further discussion? Well, uh, this brings up Commissioner Smallridge's question about where the, mo where the money's going to come from, and it would either need to come from ARP or, or general fund fund balance. So we want to amend the motion to come from a designated fund. All right. Uh, general fund balance better. Which is the better? I don't know that 
there's a, I mean, that would be, I, I don't know that I would recommend one over the other, but. Let's, Mayor, um, Mayor, you have any preference? Commissioner Dindenberg moves to amend the motion to designate the unassigned fund balance for the funding. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wandell. Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. Back on the original motion to set the limit at the 143-138. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carried. And that won't be on the bid specs, right? The, 140, the 143, 148. Uh, no, that okay. will not be on the bid specs. Thank you, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate Thanks, it. Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Lieutenant. Hey, next time, Thank you, Deputy Reback. Next time. Anything else? Anything under new business? Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Wanda, <laughs> is there any? How, how do we go about the process of looking at? Maybe this would something we do in the finance committee, uh, establishing an IT code. I guess you understand where I'm coming from. We we seem to have IT funds set up through all the departments, right? And then they might not have them or spend overspend whatever. I'm just making up stuff, but right. then they come back to IT to to get the stuff implemented or fixed. I guess what I'd like to see or consider, I don't know what the process is, to set up an IT code in Anderson County to address all the IT stuff so we can keep everything coded. Centralize those purchases. Yeah, there you go. Better, better wording, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we had, what, one or two tonight or today? Good idea. Yeah. That's certainly a possibility. I think, you know, it's probably a discussion that needs to be had. Because you could also set up IT as a cost center to where their their time and their service and so forth is built out to the departments that are <coughs> using them. So uh, it's certainly doable. I think there's you know probably merits to the way it is versus doing that. I, you know, that's that be a discussion I think that would be worth having in finance. Or I don't. I mean, I wouldn't personally have a recommendation on it without kind of understanding. Uh, I'll, I'll mean. make a. I'll just make a motion. I make a motion that we explore the idea of. Establishing an IT code within the budget. I so move. And I'll, I'll second. Motion on the floor by Commissioner Wandell to explore the possibility of a centralized IT code. Seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. Yes. Any discussion? I would also be interested to hear what the IT committee, uh, yeah. what input Good they point. would have Good point. on that as well. I know that might delay it, but at least we'd get input from everyone involved. Yeah, I'd here. be happy to add that to the motion if you yeah. wish. Now, there, there is currently $25,000 for IT in the capital code. Okay. So that, that is currently available. Uh, I'm not suggesting we do anything yeah, knee-jerk. Sure. I mean, it may be three years before we well, I think that's Well, like I right. think that's worthy of looking at and studying, for sure. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed, say no. Motion carried. Any further business under new business? All right, moving on. Anything under old business? I got one thing. Unless somebody else has something first. Oh, Mayor Frank, I'm sorry. Uh, that was mine. Yeah. So uh, this uh, committee and commission gracious, graciously consented to fund a uh, grant coordinator position. And I'm happy to say we've got one on board that came in on Monday as his first day. And that's John Prince, who's sitting right here. And, John comes to us with uh, a lot of experience managing grants, and uh, we are happy to have him on board, and he has jumped right in this week. So I just wanted to let him meet the group here. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Could you possibly hear from him to see what's your ideal? Uh, I'll put him on. I told him he's not going to answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll put him on the spot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what would you like to hear? What would you like to know? Your experience, okay. where you come from, sure. and where you want to, uh, any ideas about the grants, the future grants? 
Um, so my, my background uh, is in finance, international um, economics was my uh, major, uh, in, uh, worked in the state of California uh, for uh, bonds uh, in the Department of Veterans Affairs um, in their finance division and then uh, worked with uh, corrections um, and moved over into uh, a sub group um, that broke off of the corrections, uh, the border state and community corrections. Uh, there um, and led the um, grants division for uh, the uh, building of uh, local uh, detention facilities for jails and juvenile halls. Um, and then recently I've been uh, in the, the grant specific division um, in charge of uh, the JAG grants, Justice Assistance Grants, um, as well as the CESF um, coronavirus uh, grants, um, and then I moved here, uh, moved to Oak Ridge about a year ago, um, and was commuting back and forth, um, doing grant monitoring work uh, with some of the, um, the grantees that we had, um, and just decided I didn't want to keep traveling back and forth, and you know, it's a great opportunity to, to work in uh, the county that, that I'm living in. What brought you to Oak Ridge? You know, we, uh, my wife and I were, were looking at uh, different areas to, to get out of California when uh, the coronavirus thing hit and everybody was allowed to kind of work remotely. Um, and, you know, we were exploring different areas of Tennessee and just loved the area. And you just decided to come to Tennessee? We did, we did. I have, I have family that um, is from Chattanooga, and so I've, I've been back and forth you know, over the years, but uh, never really too much into this area. But uh, when we came out here, it kind of reminded us of Lake Tahoe area with the, the mountains and the water and everything. So it kind of fits in what, with uh, you know what my family likes and enjoys doing. What about your family? You know, it's a it's a transition for for my little ones that were uh, there in high school. Um, they're not really little anymore. And then uh, my oldest, um, she's finishing up college, so. Um, you know, they, they love that, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Any further questions? Welcome aboard. We will certainly be utilizing the front office. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Who's your commissioner? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We've <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. one second, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we can start putting that in there every month. Just so we yep. know what we spent, what's, yep. where it's going, and when we have requests, we know how, how Absolutely. it Absolutely. Thanks. I think it's about down $215 or something. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <I think, laughs> that $15 may have gone out. Hey, you're out of luck, Anything else under old business? Any further business come before the committee? Here and now, we are adjourned. <coughs>